What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to Bring the Juice. Your guy Cody here. Also joining me, Marcus, Mr. Culture Shock himself. Marcus, how you doing today? Hey, man, I'm good, man. Um, some good positivity for Colts football today. So uh, I'm enjoying today, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. You talk about some positivity. The Colts certainly got some good news on the injury front today. They got a couple good news. First off, Quentin Nelson is returning to practice this week, which is obviously a huge lift. Frank Reich also talked about how right guard is going to be a very interesting battle now with Mark Galinsky, obviously, who's been playing right guard all year. And then Chris Reed, been that left guard, but he's playing, been playing very, very well so far this season to the point where Frank Reich even said he deserves playing time. And and I tend to agree with that. You know, I, it's funny. I posted something a couple days ago and said, Chris Reed needs to stay on the field. I don't care what it takes. He's been that good. What is your reaction to to that news? You know, first off, Quentin Nelson coming back, and then Chris Reed potentially getting the gig at right guard. Yeah, I, um, you know, first of all, Big Q coming back is always a huge bonus to the offensive line for the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so him coming back, I mean, it's just going to be a good sight to see because we definitely need him to, you know, to try to make this playoff push because it's, the window is still open for the Colts. For Chris Reed's sake, I loved every snap of Chris Reed. Um, I was surprised that he was going to play this good going into the season. But, you know, Coach Frank Reich saying he needs more playing time, I totally agree. But the big question is where on the offensive line are you going to plug him in at? Um, so, I mean, you know, talking about position at right guard, big Mark is a brute. You know, I love Mark. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if, if I would supplement him for Chris Reed. So, I mean, just to figure out where we're going to put him on the offensive line is the question mark. But the fact that he needs more playing time, I totally agree with you, uh, with Coach Frank Wright on that conversation. Yeah, it's interesting. There was a stat, I think, yesterday. Uh, Mark Golinski is one of the top offensive linemen in sacks allowed. So that's very intriguing stat. Some people are asking, was it because he's, you know, basically trying to pick up the pieces with Julian Davenport's in there? I don't know what the answer is, but I think right now, and I know there have been conversations about, well, do you move him to left tackle or do you move Nelson to left tackle? You keep Chris Reed at left guard. You know, all these things. I think personally this is the right move to have him stay at guard and compete for that other spot because, I mean, let's face it, we know what Mark Lewinsky is. He's an average guard, I think, and that's fair to say. But with Chris Reed, if he's playing, and, and all stats have pointed to him playing as one of the better guards in football right now, if you have two of the best guards in football playing side by side on that offensive line, I mean, your offensive line was already really good to start. How much more if Chris Reed continues this play, could that help this offensive line even be better than it was a season ago? Yeah, I agree. Um, so, so for the situation for Big Q, uh, talking about potentially moving him to left tackle, I kind of love having him as that swing blocker. But I don't think we would really lose much because Chris Reed does just as good. But I don't think he's better. But I think he does just as good. So, like I said, I don't. I, I really don't know the offensive line situation how it may turn out. I really wouldn't try anything new going into next week against San Fran. I'd probably go for. I mean, like if this, if we were doing some things like this for the Houston Texans game, I would understand. But I mean, it's a lot of a lot of stake here for San Francisco. So, like I said, the offensive line is a huge question mark. I think they're getting better and better week by week. I uh, still got a few kinks to work out, but like I said, everybody's coming back healthy is a good sign. They're, I'm pretty sure Coach Frank will draw something up uh, and he'll figure it out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's nice to have a right tackle, you know, that you can kind of rely on with Braden Smith being out so you don't have, have to ask the question now, would you move Chris Reed to right tackle or something along those lines or Golinski to right? You know, I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. But the Colts got some other really, really good news today. Dio Dengbo, for the first time this season – is practicing. Now, he's not eligible for a couple weeks still, but certainly great to see Dio, especially with how bad the Colts have been at getting after the passer so far. Certainly great news to see Dio starting to practice again. Yeah, man. I'm, I, I loved it. Uh, I talked about it on Twitter. Um, I definitely responded to your tweet, by the way. Uh, but, you know, for, for him to actually be at practice is a good sight to see. I think it's one of the things the Colts fans just want to see him on the field. I mean, I'm trying not to put him on no ceiling, no high pedestal, but it's just one of those guys that you just want to see him play. You talk so much about him with his freakish athleticism and his long wingspan. It's like, okay, let's put him on the defensive line and see how he turns out with Grover Stewart and DeForest Buckner and Quiddy Pay and those guys. I would love to see how it turns out. It's just as simple as that. So, 
I mean, like I said, I, there's no real no real uh, motivation towards it. It's just the fact that I want to see him on the field to see what his potential, what he may bring. But it's still just a beautiful sight to see him at practice. I just can't wait for him to snap on the field, man. Yeah, the dude's a freak, man. I'm excited because he, you know, talk about Buckner being a matchup nightmare. I mean, Dio's even longer, which is crazy to even say because Buckner's one of the longer guys in the defensive line in, in the NFL. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what he brings here in a couple of weeks. Maybe he can bring some much needed juice, some much needed, you know, freshness in the legs and stuff like that that this defensive line's desperately needing right now, especially with guys like Kamoko Ture still not practicing today. Quiddy Pay didn't practice today. Other guys, Rocky Sin, Darius Leonard. But one thing that was interesting, Marcus, is that Braden Smith was doing some field work today. I thought that was of note. Like he was on the sideline doing some more field work again. I know he'd done that like a couple weeks ago, but maybe it's a good sign towards him trending to play Sunday. Uh, I don't know how you feel about Braden Smith. It's been such a weird situation with Smith just being such a slow rehab for him. What are your thoughts on him working on the sideline? Do you see that potentially being good for further this week when the Colts do play Sunday night football? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think these practices is just to see where he's at mentally, or physically, if he can play or not. Uh, I think he's just not pushing the note. Um, so I think he's just taking it week by week. And, uh, you know, Coach Frank will probably ask him eventually, hey, can you play? If he can play, he'll probably put him out there if on limited snaps. And if not, he'll just continue to go through this long process of trying to recover. And, you know, so when he comes out there, he can be fully healthy and give it his all. Because we've seen people on 50% on that offensive line still getting banged up. I mean, Eric Fisher, his first few weeks, it was pretty rough because he still wasn't fully healthy. I think he just came back too early. So I think yeah. for Braden Smith's sake, he's just taking it week by week and, you know, safety precautions and just trying to see where he's at uh, physically to try to get on the field as soon as possible. Yeah, and like I mentioned, it helps to have a guy like Matt Pryor who you still feel pretty good about even if Braden Smith – doesn't give it a go this week. You still feel like your right tackle's not going to be the issue this week. So that's good. What are your thoughts, real quick, to deviate from, from some of the news, what are your thoughts on Eric Fisher so far? Because I've seen people kind of all over the spectrum on Eric Fisher. What do you think about Eric Fisher so far? We're still rehabbing, obviously, from those Achille, that Achilles injury, not 100% back yet. What have your thoughts been overall on him? Well, for, for one, I think Eric Fisher is all I predicted. Um, I didn't think he was going to be one of the best left tackles coming into the Indianapolis Colts. One of his best abilities, one of the reasons why we got him is for his run blocking ability. I think his run blocking ability is very solid, but when it comes to the pass protection, it's a little bit worse, as we all can see from the film and, you know, per analysis if you're watching the games or if you're just watching the left tackle in general. Um, but, you know, like I said, I think his run ability, his run blocking ability is very, is very good. Uh, but when it comes to the pass protection, it is lacking. I think he can get better at that as the weeks may come. Like he needs a guy like Big Q that's going to be beside him. I mean, he's pretty Big Q is just one of those guys that on on ear is just on pace of helping who was ever next to him uh, for the protection. So I think whenever Big Q comes back and they're lined up next to each other, you'll probably have a better performance coming out of Eric Fisher. Absolutely, yeah. The last bit of news I wanted to kind of talk about real fast, the Colts made a couple very interesting practice squad moves today. They actually signed two defensive backs, two former pretty high picks. First off was former first-round pick Darquez Denard. He got drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals all the way back in 2014. He's about 30 years old, so he's getting a little bit up there in age. And then the Colts also signed safety Josh Jones, who was a former second-round pick a couple of years ago in 2017. What are your thoughts on these moves that the Colts have made to their potential, to their secondary? Obviously not on the active roster right now, but guys that could potentially come in here if an injury or something happens, say Rock doesn't give it a go or whatever it may be. What are your overall thoughts on these two practice squad signings? I extremely love the Daquez Denard move. Um, Daquez has always been a decent corner in the league. Some people think he's solid, but like I said, he's always been, been a pretty solid corner. Um, adding him to the practice squad, just the fact that he's on the roster is one of those things. It's just like a big whiff of breath. It's like, okay, we finally got a veteran corner that we needed because we haven't made any moves at the cornerback depth that was pretty much eye popping or, oh, we know that guy. You know, it's like there's no name shaming of the guys that we did acquire in the past that didn't seem to go out there and pan it out. Like the game, for example, when we had uh, Mo P. Keys out there in one-on-one -on -one coverage, like, you, you just wish there was a better guy out there in that position, especially when someone goes down in the injury during that game. It's like the backups just weren't good enough. So now yeah. you got a guy like uh, Darquez Denard on the roster 
is that if this scenario may come that he might have to come out there, we know what we can, what he can bring to the roster, especially with our scheme. So I'm pretty sold on that move. I love the move uh, in general. So like I said, it's, it's a good move for the Colts. Hopefully he does get put on the roster just in case if we do have to use him. I think he'll be a pretty solid pickup. Yeah, I do too. It's a nice to have another veteran guy in there. Even if Rock does come back, right? You mean, I mean, Xavier Rhodes has been struggling. So it'd be nice to have a guy, if Xavier Rhodes continues to struggle, maybe you put Darquist Denard out there and you're like, let's just see what he can do. If he plays well, boom, you're good at corner for a while. So I certainly hope that uh, the Colts use him in some way because I'm excited to see him on the field. I'm also intrigued by Jones just because he was a former second round pick. And he has some sort of talent, obviously, to be drafted that high. So I'm excited for both these guys. I think Denard, obviously, the guy that, that's more notable. But I think both these guys could potentially be some nice finds by Ballard. We shall see what happens there. But that'll do it, guys, I think, for pretty much all the news here on a Wednesday. Thank you, Marcus, for coming on, man, giving your insight, giving your reaction, your thoughts to some of these news. A lot of stuff that happened today in Colts land. And I'm excited, man, because the, as the Forrest Buckner said, Going into this Sunday night football game, it's a little personal for me. And I'm excited for that because I think, man, he could have a couple sacks, honestly. And with, with we know how that those personal games go sometimes. And DeForest Buckner is a type of player that's very capable of doing that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially from gaining momentum at the last week against Houston. I mean, you look at both of those offensive lines. I mean, San Fran's a little bit better, but I'm pretty sure they probably have the same mishaps, uh, same lack of depth. So I think DeForest Buckner has his momentum, what he needs. And I think he's going to push the agenda next Sunday uh, going against San Francisco with a little bit more chip on his shoulder. So I think he's going to probably have himself a nice game. Absolutely. We hope to see it, man. Thank you again for coming on. Thank you guys for tuning in and supporting us. Really appreciate everything that you do. And as always, guys, go Colts.